mic check one two it's the y2k collector so there's been all this talk about emulation and how it can save money and i do believe that emulating is a great way to go if you want to you know save some money and not have to pay some of the exorbitant prices um to buy some of these original titles right but there's there's instances where you run into whether it be an emulation or a port, because I, I know there's a difference between emulating and a game that's been ported, right? So emulation is, you know, basically where you are trying to recreate the game on a different device. Um, and it's really meant to kind of give you that same exact feel as how it would feel on the original console. And I know that ports are a little bit different because sometimes when a game is ported, um, certain little things are changed about it, but to a casual game player and a casual collector like myself, they almost feel like the same thing. Emulating, porting, if it's not on the original device, then it's, it's not original. You're not getting the, the genuine experience. And we know that there are a ton of ports, right? The Switch is an example of a console that has received ports of a ton of games. I I, the, I just don't understand why they haven't ported Hagane to the Switch yet. Like, seriously, why have they not ported Hagane to the Switch? But I, I, I digress. We know that the Switch has gotten a lot of ports, and that's what makes the Switch an amazing console because of the vast selection of games that you can play that you probably never would have had a chance to play because they're just so doggone expensive on their original consoles. However... I personally feel like when you play a port, there is there's a diminished quality to it. Now, a person who's never played the game originally, like on its original console, they may not know the difference, right? So someone who's maybe 13, 10 years old, if you didn't grow up in the 90s, if you didn't grow up with a Super Nintendo or a Sega Genesis, and you play a game that was originally on the Super Nintendo and then got ported to the Switch... You're going to think, wow, this game is great. It's amazing. And you're not really going to be able to tell the difference in the feel of the game and the gameplay. But if you're a person like myself, who I feel like a dinosaur these days, even though I'm not that old. Um, if you're a person like myself who remembers what the original experience was like, you're going to know. You're going to feel it and it's going to bug you. It's going to bug you to death because you're going to you're, you're going to it's like chasing that feeling that you just cannot get. And the reason why I have this focused on my PSP here is because this is a great example. So there is a game that before Smash Brothers, this was the game to play, right? If you had your friends over and it was Power Stone. Now I have Power Stone on the Sony, on the PlayStation Portable. Um, and they did a good job of making like the Power Stone collection series. So with this, you get Power Stone 1 and Power Stone 2. Now for me, I grew, whoa, for me, oh, look at this. Look, I'll show you an example, right? I'm going to do my special move with Wang Tang, right? So I just did my special move with Wang Tang. I'm trying to do this with one hand, so don't, so don't kill me. Let me see if I can get one more special move out. All right. So as you can see, wow, I'm getting all the power stones here. So let me go ahead and pause it right here. Well, did they just give me another power stone? Okay, so let me, I might as well, since I have all three power stones, let me try this again. Whoa, this guy just knocked me off. You sure did. So I'm going to do my special again with Wang Tang. There you go, right? All right, so now let's pause it. So I actually grew up playing Power Stone 2 every day after school because there used to be a community center in my neighborhood. And one of the things that we used to do is we used to get together every day and we would play either fighting games like Street Fighter 2. And then once the Sega Genesis died down, we got the N64 and we would all play Smash Bros on the N64. And then once the Dreamcast came out, it came. It became all about the Dreamcast and we would play Power Stone and Power Stone 2. Well, first it was Power Stone, but Power Stone, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, was only one-on-one, -on -one, which was kind of lame because you had to wait more turns and there would be like 20 of us in the, in the, in the community center. It was like an after-school center kind of thing. And, um, you know, you'd have to go one versus one. So when Power Stone 2 came out and it was four-player, oh, that was a game changer because more people could play. You know, that was when everybody wanted to team up. You know, you didn't want to play with anyone who was whack because if they were whack, then you had to give up the controller. And if you've ever played 
in a couch co-op setting or in a group setting, no one wants to give up the controller. They never want to give up the controllers, but even when they lose. And so I grew up playing Power Stone and Power Stone 2 almost every day um, at one point. And I had become, it's Power Stone 2 is one of those games, kind of like Smash Bros, where after a while, it's all about feel, it's about timing, it's about knowing the maps, it's about knowing how to use all the items that you get, because it's very much like Smash Bros in a way. The only difference is that once you collect three Power Stones, you kind of like go Super Saiyan, you go into like this supercharged version of your character, and you get to do one of two special moves. One is usually some type of like anti-air attack or some type of ground attack. And then usually the other attack is like some massive projectile attack. Now, I, I pulled out my PlayStation Portable and for I just decided to give it a go um, just to kind of, you know, get the feels on Power Stone 2. And I got to be honest, it, it is not the same. Um, I, I think it's great that for a person who's never had a chance to play Power Stone, you get a chance to play it here on the on the PlayStation Portable, but playing it on the PSP is just not the same at all. For one, the graphics obviously aren't going to look the same at all. There's a lot of like aliasing when you try to play this game on the PSP just, just because of how the PSP screen is set up. So that just kind of takes away from the experience right there. The second thing is the controls. Now this, this little button right here is supposed to be like an analog stick in a way. But it's clearly nothing like an analog that you would find on a Dreamcast controller just because it's just it's not like this type of analog stick is not meant for the type of rigorous action that it's going to be taking when you're playing a game like Power Stone. It's very, you know, you need that. It, it, there's just a level of it doesn't give you that tactile functionality when you're trying to play the game. And then, you know, the PlayStation Portable, in my opinion, is really meant for like one player games this is a game that's best played in a group setting so unless you're connecting over some type of internet connection to play someone which i think this game had that capability at one point if you're not doing that um it's really not a whole lot of fun and at the time i don't know how many people were trying to play power stone 2 on the playstation portable so while yes you do get the experience and yes this port or this emulated version of Power Stone 2 is still fun to play maybe by yourself it's nothing close to the original experience and for those of you who want to know what the original experience was well the original experience could be had by playing the game on the Dreamcast and let me see if I have my copy just for those of you who who maybe don't remember or maybe you've never seen it because I know we've got a, a, a younger crowd out there, a younger generation. But this is the Power Stone 2 that I remember. This is the Power Stone 2 that we used to stay up all night going at it over. And this is the Dreamcast experience um, that you go for when playing a game like Power Stone. And look at that like just even looking at the graphics on the back of the on the back of the game you could just see like the graphics were amazing for that time oh my disc got a little crack in it but even that i love that that's character right that you get that from a character that's how i've had this game for quite some time so i'm surprised this case doesn't have more damage but th this experience is so different from trying to play it on a psp and um what's the condition of the disc oh this is still in good condition good um, so yeah, I mean, let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you think that emulation works or porting games work in every instance? Or do you, do you think that there are some games that just cannot be emulated? I, for one, think that there are some games that just can't be emulated. They can't be ported. They are best played on the original hardware. No matter how you cut it, no matter what you say, you, you, really the only way to experience them is how they were, you know, when they originally released. But I'm interested to know your thoughts. I'm going to continue trying to get my game on on this PSP. I mean, it's not like I have, you know, anyone, you know, to, to kind of play in Power Stone 2 at this point. So I'm going to continue to enjoy the uh, PSP experience. Um, but let me know down in the comments. Have you ever um, played Power Stone 2 on the PlayStation Portable? Do you think it's a good way to experience it? Or you, do you think there's just something to be said for that original Dreamcast experience? I'm the Y2K Collector. Take it easy.